Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we're here. What's up, Javi? You ready, Big Don? I'm, I'm ready, man. Then put the phone away. You ready, Big Don? I, I got caught. I got caught. He was taking selfies of his put beard. The phone, you know, check, gotta check it out. Uh, welcome to the What Did He Said podcast. First of all, off rip, off top. I hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day. Uh, big shout out to manscaped.com, making sure all the fellas had a luxurious and smooth uh, Valentine's. Para todas las viejas. Uh, yeah. Get, get, get the naked mole right out. The naked who what? The naked mole rat. The naked no. mole rat. The naked mole Google rat. Google it. Google it. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, Manscaped.com. If you punch in Chingo at checkout, how much percentage they get off, Rob? 20% off Manscaped.com. They got all kinds of stuff, man. The weed whacker. It's cordless. It's rechargeable. Um, waterproof. You know, you okay. can take it in that shower with your big dog. You know what I'm talking about? A little off the top. Clock, clock. <laughs> High and tight on the you sides. Know what I'm saying? I, I, <laughs> Leave I, a sideburn on there get, for you. Get your ball tapered for your balls. Yeah, don't you know talk about. Ta- get a south side fade. <laughs> you know what? Put, put, put on some outcast so fresh and so clean. Go to town. Lord have mercy. You know what I'm saying? 20% off. Take 100% off. Hey, you know what I'm saying? hey Manscaped, they just got the bonus, bonus shout out right there with Javi Luna. <laughs> uh, also, man, big shout out to Tehuacan. Uh, we got the Tehuacan mineral water in the house. They're showing love. Pie tequila. I had this last night. Well, we had this last night. Juan came over last night, man. Uh, My sister-in-law, who's also single, came over last night. So it was like a rom-com. They didn't know. We were trying to set them up. No. But uh, we busted out some pie tequila, and uh, it was delicious. I slept. I slept amazing. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, so let's set it off, man. We got man. special guests in the building, man. We got that boy T in the house. What's up, Big Doc? Good, man. Good to be back. Good man, to be back. Man, wait till y'all hear the songs we have under construction. We got some stuff in yeah, the we vault. Got some, we got some heat, man. Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna let Juan Perez be the judge. We'll let him jam out, see what he thinks. What's up, man? We got Juan Perez up, up, up. on the put it on the gym playlist. Up, we got yeah. producer Big Rob in the back. What's up, Big Don? With no camera, no, dog. No, no, he, no camera, Rob. Happy. Yeah, he he he's humble like that, bro. Hit, hit the GoFundMe, get Rob a camera. Yeah, he's he's humble like that, man. Hit the producer cam. He's like, what? I get to produce today? Hell yeah, you know just produce. <laughs> he's humble like that, he's man. Killing it. So, how was everybody's Valentine's, man? She, it was. I was working, man. Oh yeah, uh, how did, was the did, show? Did the did the show in Corpus? It was, it was fun. I had some podcast listeners come out, uh, both on Saturday. What did uh, he say, shout, folks? Shout out, what did he say? Just, shout out, Justin, listener. The podcast came out nice. came out to the show on Saturday and, and uh, had a couple people that, that saw me with you a couple weeks ago or la- it was just last week. Yeah, uh, in Corpus they they came back last night for the show and and it was great. It was uh, it, nice. it it was fun. It, it, it was hard, man. We, we you know uh, was going through some some personal stuff. A friend of mine passed away oh. right before the show. Damn, like, man. Like, yeah, thirty minutes before. But you oh. know what? Uh, he had to mess with me a little bit. The mic went out during my show. Apparently Marlon Wayne's had like uh, been there like a couple weeks before us, and like did some type of helicopter shit. Oh no! With the microphone, and instead of replacing the cable, they just oh, it decided to go out in the middle of my set, and so the speakers start popping in the middle of my the first the first one, it sounded like someone was shooting, right? So so I, I you know I kind of made it like at first it was like let me assist the, assess the situation. Yeah, yeah. Once I realized it was it was the the microphone popping. Then I, you know, had to had to kind of run with it. So I ended up doing the show without a mic for about ten minutes. No too. shit. They were able to run a new camera. Was that yeah. at the downtown? That was, no, that was at the south side where we were at. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was fun. So they had to go run and get another cable. They had to go run and get a because it wasn't the mic; it was the cable. The cable had become frayed, so they had to go run a whole other cable for that mic. Find the cable and run it. And so, so I did about ten minutes of of, of my show just uh, acapella in that big ass room. Hey. So, hey. Uh, that's a professional, professional. Right there. That, but it worked. Professional, it worked, man. and Javi Luna be helping other Latino comedians. You know what I'm saying? I had another Latino comic. <laughs> Have you helped a Latino comic today, Chingo? In the arms <laughs> of for just seventy six cents a day, you can help a Latino comic. These these young poor poor yeah. kids that don't know how to barely know how to speak English. Barely can speak English. Don't know how to navigate the entertainment industry for themselves. Don't know how to you read can, a template. You can you you can put them on. You you can. <laughs> You you can buy them an Emilio Zapata t shirt and everything else that they need to Ooh, be a yeah. successful Emiliano Latino. Zapata. <laughs> <laughs> we, we covered we covered that um, everybody right now is clout chasing and getting their uh, views up from Ooh. the George Lopez situation. Ooh. Everybody got a hot take. Did you hear about that, bro? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, we did a video. We did a podcast. <laughs> I don't heard about that shit. Yeah. But um, 
We heard the entire That's thing. That's a, so. a funny. I mean, the, whatever the conversation was, what it, whatever it was, and he showed his ass. My thing is 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 is, is like like everybody chiming in that wasn't part of the conversation. It's, it's whatever. Like even even like you got like open micers be like like hey we need to do but hey man like. <laughs> You, this is not what you should be putting your energy and focusing yeah. on, on on posting about the the George Lopez Ralph Barbosa fucking fiasco. Beef. You know what I'm saying? You need you need to be fucking writing and fucking going to open mics like like that. You're not not gonna get nowhere because George Lopez didn't put you on a show. You're not gonna get anywhere because you focus on the wrong shit yeah. all the time. Ralph's probably like hell yeah, man. I, more more numbers. <laughs> oh no no, it's great for those guys. Yeah. Yeah. It, believe me, there, there's. Even though you're not hearing him, there's as many people that fucking are siding with George as, as, as Rob. George, George ain't going to lose no tickets off of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The people that like him, like him for what he does. Mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, fucking, he's an asshole. He don't want to help no one. Oh, well, yeah. mm-hmm. I still think his jokes are funny. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about him is his politics. That's it. Oh, well, you know. That's it. I ain't got no problem with him otherwise. Yeah. You know. That's what it is. But Tisha's like, like, yeah, man. I, I, I mean, I, I, what I really want to say, I'm trying to hold it in. So, hey, T's about to set it off no, uh, no, in, no. into the rapper world. Like, first of all, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> <laughs> big rappers out there. Well, well, in this room, I mean, hey, uh, R- Ralph's the homie. You know what I mean? Like, oh, when he, before yeah, he came out Ralph. here to H Town, he reached out. He was like, "Yo, pull up to the show, whatever." And this was before all that went yeah. on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, regardless of the situation, whether he spoke on to him or not, that dude was finna blow up. Regardless, yeah, he was yeah, already, he was already there. Was already there. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His, so his, one of them are hurting. He his name away just with got more followers. Yeah. His name just got threw into this mix. Yeah, now nah, for yeah, sure. It was sure. even anything he did. I mean, I, I think the dude yeah. on that podcast show, what's his name? Uh, Steve. That yeah, that brought him up. I don't think he was bringing. Them up just to just are we allowed to mention other are we allowed Steven? to mention other podcasts? Steven, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know Steve. We, we no, Steven. That's our boy too. Are we allowed to mention other podcasters? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Okay, okay, that's a bit. Now, nah, well, uh, I mean, I don't think he was throwing it out there at George. Like, say I was doing an interview about rap music or whatever, and they're like, Hey, have you heard about so and so? Which they do all the time. All you the heard time. about this upcoming Mexican kid, you know, from so and so. Yeah, I heard. If I heard of him, yeah, I heard of him. You know, whatever. But I'm not gonna sit here and talk down on the kid that I've never met, never shook his hand, never. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. If if I see him doing this thing, which I I mean, I've given a lot of props yeah. to a lot of upcoming Shows low Mexican character. rappers. Back in the day, we did the Latin mic pass. Mm-hmm. If it was on some. I don't want no other Mexican rappers around me to shine. We, that would have never existed. Yeah, never there would happened. be no Mexican mic pass right now. Mm-hmm. That was us bringing everybody on. North Together. side, south side, east side, west side, Mexican, you know, whatever you rep, whatever hood, any of that. We all put that aside. We came together, we did the mic pass, put it out, and, and it made history. You know For what sure. I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if it was that type of situation, like, why, why don't, why don't you want to see other Latinos shine? Hey, what why if, don't you want to see other Mexicans come up? We all came from the same struggle. You feel me? What if they ask you about a um, a Mexican rapper that you never heard of, and you're like, Nah, I never heard of him, and then they bring him up ten more times in the interview? <laughs> At what point you're like, God damn? I mean, bro. well, that that just shows me, like, Hey, I need to go look into this kid. Yeah. Do I need to go do a record yeah. with him? Do I need to reach out to yeah. him? Hey, what's up? You know, whatever. Yeah. Like, I mean. And I've done that before. Like people have mentioned somebody's name, and I haven't heard of him. But after the interview's done, I'm gonna look him up. And if yeah. he's dope, I'm gonna follow him. I'm yeah. gonna shout him. Hey, what's up? Let's work. You know, it ain't gonna be lo- no hate, no ill will, no. It's all about me because it ain't all about me. It's about all of us. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's the thing about T, man. T, he's so laid back. Like T's yeah. like positive, shows love, and don't got no hate in his blood. Right. You know what I mean? Man, it just because be. in this rap game in Houston, it, from my perspective, we always got the short end of the stick. Every time there was rap award shows, every time that we were never included, every time they're writing us up in the Houston Press or the Houston Chronicle or online on these blogs, they never included us. And I was the one that would jump in there and talk mess to these people, these DJ, radio DJ. Oh, don't do that. Y'all, they're going to blackball you from the ra-. Come on, man. I'm a, And now I got the respect from these, the same dudes I was on there talking shit. They got, I got respect from them because I went and stuck my, you know, name, my neck out there mm-hmm. and did that to fight for other Latinos. Now, every single show that the radio stations doing there's mexican artists all over it they're playing our music now they're writing us up in the blogs they're putting us on the podcast they're you know everything so if, if that would have never happened you never know what history w- would today would be like you know what i mean so i mean i think we kind of like laid the foundation for all that and that's the complete opposite of what you know is going on over there and in, in that you know i don't know nothing about the comedy world but 
That just soft, that's like to me that's like soft, that's mostly. weak, bro. That's soft, weak. Mostly. Especially like, compared. That's that, that's why I'm upset. Cause nah, the rap should be soft too. But but going. Well, well, no, I'll, 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 I'll com- dip in I mean, com- comedy comedy beef and rap beef are still two different worlds. Yeah, I mean, that's in, true. in a rap beef, you can still end up on a t-shirt. Yeah. Like in a comedy beef, <laughs> it might have a little. Da- it might be a little bit of danger sometimes. You know what I'm saying? In the co- in the comedy, the most you're gonna end up on a fucking meme. You know, yeah. you're gonna end up fucking being talked about on every podcast for the next two weeks. You, you'll you know, become that, a punchline. That, that, yeah, that's it. Come on, fucking well, comedy beef. Well, well, Get, well, move the fuck on. Well, let's talk about this though, because it's like a parallel. Right now, there's this same thing. You got a lot of clout chasing podcasts. Everybody's making uh, hot takes on uh, the king of Chicano rap. Everybody, yeah. right. they all fighting over this title. <laughs> you had, uh, I guess it's like King Lil G, Conejo, Little Rob, and they're just all kind of like. It's mainly King Lil G, like kind of like Every trying to I'm see who wants smoke. But but like Conejo was like an OG about it. Like, hey, young man, you can have that. You know what I'm saying? Don't that, that's all you can. It folk. don't matter because the real ones. No, it don't matter. You know, no title, whatever. Put any list that comes out that someone's. And, someone's and you know opinion. what? And and I'm gonna say this, bro. Like, I feel like one thing that's messing up the uh, a lot of the stuff in the Mexican rapper lane, which mm-hmm. is a fucked up box to put yourself in you know what i'm saying like you instantly gonna get compared to people just because y'all from the same state or the same color or they're gonna be like running up on people that don't know shit about spm situation like what's up with spm motherfucker i don't know you know what i mean but but with that being said i feel like one thing that really messes up everything in the latin rap world is for one you got a whole bunch of people Still trying to fill SPM shoes. They still they like like when like when Pimp C said uh y'all shit fell off because they was biting too much pot. Like you got a whole bunch of wannabe SPMs running around still. Mm-hmm. That man been locked up for like probably twenty something years, and they still trying to figure out trying to be somebody <laughs> else. That's yeah. how I see it. I don't know. No, no, I get, I get. Yeah, at some point you got to move from okay, this person inspired me to and and whatever to okay, well, what what. But, but who are you as an artist? What are you? What are you gonna? Yeah. What What are you gonna do? do? Yeah. It's different. You can't if you're if you're just constantly chasing like I'm trying to be the next X Y Z. I mean you, you ain't yeah you ain't mm-hmm. going nowhere. I mean other other than to be a cheaper version of whatever it is you're trying to be. That's the plot to Rockstar. Mm-hmm. What is that? <laughs> that Rockstar? Movie? Yeah, wasn't that the movie with Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> what was that called? Yeah, and I know oh, the movie. The one. Uh, that was the plot to it. Rockstar, yeah. where he was. Oh, the guy. oh, right. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I gotta yeah. take a piss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he won. Yeah, he 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 was a tribute act. Oh, uh, and the then he ended thing. up getting the the actual gig mm-hmm. in the, in the band, and then he's like, "But I'm not creating anything. I'm literally yeah. just impersonating someone else." And let me add this too, man. Um, one thing that people I feel like the fans and the average person doesn't really understand is. How the algorithm works and how that shit could get you in some in some hot water. Meaning, like, for example, this uh King of Chicano rap title that some people are wanting to fight over or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, the algorithm likes that shit because it gets clicks, right? It's clickbait, so every they generate money for advertisers or whatever. So don't let the algorithm <laughs> get you in some hot water where like Bitch, where shit just starts to escalate and then they splice mm-hmm. context out or you say something somewhere and don't nobody want to hear the 30 seconds before and the 30 seconds after. Or when you say no disrespect, but, you know, they well, cut yeah. that out. Yeah, well, even the Lopez thing, that was what, like not even a two minute clip out of a, that that thing was like two hours long or something? Yeah, it was like a two and a half hour two podcast. Two and a half hour podcast, a two minute clip. They cut out all the parts of like no disrespect. If you if go you know? go back, do yourself a favor. If you, go back. I haven't even done it because I don't care. But if you care, if you're if yeah. you're out there chiming in on this shit, go watch the whole thing. Yeah, no, they don't. They there, just want to. There, there was a way that he got so he was clearly frustrated, and and I'm not defending the guy. I, I do think yeah. the guy's an asshole. Okay, but and his politics suck. But 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 he was clearly flustered in that situation. Go watch how he got to that that level of frustration, and see if you feel exactly the same way, or if you think like ah, eh, you know, or you might walk away with like. Damn, sound like he was trying to help the guest, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like whoever was listening might have gained something. And right? Wow, you might get to see the human side of, of the people. Things aren't always as they seem. Look into it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you know, real shit. But like that. But like I was saying about the 
the yeah. algorithm, man, like right now that that shit is running everything and people don't know that they're feeding it. They're trying to like monetize off of it. And mm-hmm. in a way we are too, in terms of like, you know, hey, we have several podcasts. You know what I'm saying? We want the algorithm to put us out there so people can see us and mm-hmm. we could grow the fan base and sell more tickets and everything else. But like folks got to really understand how that shit works, especially. Oh, I'll give you the best example. Best example right here. All right. When when um, Takeoff got killed in Houston mm-hmm. while he was hanging out with uh, the Prince family, J, you know, Jay Prince Jr. And I think Jazz. Right. Well. You know, they the Prince family in the process of the algorithm feeding the thumbnail and the clickbait, it's turning into new evidence exposed. Find out how we know they checked in. You know, they checked in, but they didn't have protection. It was a setup. It was a robbery. They're like dice game gone wrong. Everybody's fucking sticking their cuchara in the way. Meanwhile, you're dragging the Prince family name in the dirt alleging a lot of shit that ain't even ain't even really fucking true they're like what check in that was our friend ain't nobody extorting nobody then nobody they're like y'all don't even have enough money for that to even be a business plan for us like extort people artists (laughs) (laughs) artists you know what i'm saying like check in but anyway i'd hate to um for that shit to escalate or anybody to get hurt over the fucking out Google's algorithm. The Google CEOs are in no danger. Like no, the good. people that run YouTube, they're in, they hop in their Tesla and they go to their home in San Francisco. They don't they don't have to wash their back or have their name dragged in the mud. So I know that got real deep right there. It's but all that. good. It's all good. Hey, leave your comment though. Let yeah. us know. What Let you, us know in the comments because we section. try we try to feed the algorithm too. Yeah, we try to feed the algorithm. So Please. clips are coming. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, <laughs> we, we cool with the Prince family. And, uh, <laughs> You know, and, and rest in peace, take off, man. It don't got to be all that fucking accusations and name calling and shit. But uh, T, man, shit, when we dropping this project, big dog? Man, ASAP. <laughs> Dude, I was in the studio with um, a Mexican OT and um, Gold Soul from the <laughs> song. First of all, I had woke up early that day. Uh, we were staying in the in like the country, like Kingsville. Drove into Corpus that morning. Forty five minutes away. Yeah, so we drove into Corpus that morning. Probably got coffee, breakfast. Then I had a jujitsu class at eleven. Long story short, it was like a long fucking day. I did two shows at Mesquite Street Comedy Club, and uh, and then afterwards, after we finished, get paid out and everything. Afterwards, we're like we're headed to the studio, but you got to add a little bit of tequila into the mix. Shout out to Pie Tequila. A little bit of shrooms and the chocolate. Next thing you know, you're in the studio and it's just like, fuck, man, who, what are we doing? Is this the beat? Like, who are we writing to? Who goes first? Is there a hook? Like, <coughs> it, it got a little fucking hectic. Next thing you know, uh, Mexican OT, he's in there. He got the backwoods. Next thing you know, his shirt is off. <laughs> it, 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 it was literally like hanging with like me and some of my friends 15 years ago. Where I'm just like, in, like I just came out of a time machine. Like, fuck, bro. Like, slow down, man. Like, <clears throat> but it, that was us. You know, T remembers, man, we, we had that house off of Woodridge and it was just, you know, a little house and every room was something. Either yeah. we burning CDs over there or we record music in here. And can you tell people a little bit about that golden era when when there was a thing called record stores? Yeah, mixtapes. <laughs> can you can you tell the listeners, man, because some people don't even know what a CD I'm is. Selling out the trunk. No, my son asked me what MTV is. Damn, damn, damn. Hey, no cap. I had on a shirt, you know, just like with the MTV. How old is he? There. How old is he? He's eight years old. Oh, okay. And yeah, it, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he's young enough, but he looked at me and he was like, Dad, what's MTV? And I'm like, it used to play music videos back you, in the you day. You flipped the table. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it did. It kind of made me feel a little bit old. But, I mean, it just goes to like, bro, we went from Napster to MySpace, to Twitter, to, you know, everything that came along the way. And and even, like, to these days, like, CDs, like, a lot of people don't even have a CD player in their car now. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, cars don't mm-hmm. even make CD players no more. Ain't that a bitch. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's somewhere sitting with the A-Tracks now, mm-hmm. if people know what the A-Track is. But, yeah, so um, we would have to go sit there hand in hand and one by one pressing up these CDs, which, like, you had a room in your office. Mm-hmm. We had to have a room with... Stacks of burners everywhere, 
and we popping in the CDs and we burning them all day to to make you know a thousand copies to go hand out at the at the car show or at the club or you know wherever that, we that going was, that, that night. That was our podcast back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, for sure. And uh, even with the T-shirts, like we had the, the press in there, print up our own T-shirts, our own CDs, go print up some posters and, and then hit the road and just, you know, one by one sell them when you actually go meet the people and touch them and, hey, check out my record, I'm so-and-so, I'm from, you know, whatever. Now they just <coughs> jump on their phone and, you know, it's all given to them. Man, I remember one time it was a, uh, a car show. Was it like Dub Magazine? It was like a car show in Dallas and... I think I had like my daughter and my mom with me or something. I was like, man, let's go hit this little car show real quick and uh, get a booth and, you know, slang some of this shit. And boy, T had like ca- actual cars in his booth. <laughs> it was like a fucking retail car display. It was like candy paint, candy store. And it was just like a shit ton of people. I was like, God damn, boy, T doing his thing out here, boy. I was like, T, remember me? T. <laughs> I'm like jumping over people. Hey, get in line, son. T. Yeah. Hey, that, that was a crazy year. That was like one of the biggest years I've ever had to turn out to my booth of me showing up to the car show or whatever. I had my car parked in there with the swingers and everything. Um, I think Bash pulled up. A lot of people didn't even know Bash was sitting inside of my car the whole time. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Hiding? What the fuck? Yeah, no, he was smoking. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah, he was like, what's up? Can I jump? Because, you know, the, the, the nephew security was walking Let around. Let me have him here real quick, I mean? nephew. So I was like, hey, bro, my car is right here. Jump in the whip. So he in the whip. I think at the end, he put the window down. All the smoke came out and everybody seen him. There. It was like oh, an Easter egg. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> Bash was, was here cool. the entire time. Yeah, but the 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 it was just the, the turnout was crazy. I think I took pictures from I don't know how many hours. But the car show was over already. The security guard, like, had to kick people out from the booth. And I'm like, yo, we still taking pictures. He's like, nah, y'all got to go. But I try to just get every single picture. And then, and then I think right after that, I think that's when we chopped it up and we're like, yo, you know, we got to go hit the road, do to put this. Put oh this yeah, on the, then you know. we did a we did a three city tour with Cap G because Cap G hadn't really touched the Texas market yet. Now he's been here a gazillion times. Now yep. he he has yeah. his own network, knows a bunch of people. But like we did like a some small venue in Austin. Uh, where else? Fort Worth. We did. Uh, I think we did like Dallas, San Antonio, Austin. Probably there's those three, and I want. There might have been one more. There might have been, but all the shows were crazy. Like it had a crazy turnout. Like, and this was all doing. Like, bro, we did a whole tour off of freestyle on a mixtape track. Oh yeah, yeah, we put together <laughs> uh, a peso. All I want is peso. I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Something like that. Is that what we said on the song? Yeah. Hey, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, um, and we did a whole tour off that. And you know what? Uh, what really facilitated that? was the advent of Eventbrite. Because for the first time, you able to be the promoter and cut out all these extra people that are just offering you a flat rate. You know what I'm saying? Where they're like, hey, how much are you going to be to bring you, Cap G, and that boy T? It's like, well, good luck. Yeah. You know, that might be a little tricky. Like, because mm-hmm. you're going to, you know, you want to make some money too. And, you know, mm-hmm. you're doing all your math and calculations. But when it was us putting it together and like cat was so new and so young and like he was with his brothers and stuff we were literally like kind of explaining and showing them like hey dude where your merch at you know like you know you can put your merch right here it was like oh man you know the brothers are there and shit like hey man where the merch at you know what i'm saying like you got double dip bro it's a triple mm-hmm. dip quadruple mm-hmm. dip but that was lit you gotta get your tequila sponsor you, got, you know what i'm you know saying what that's saying? the quadruple <laughs> dip right there shout out to pie tequila <laughs> yeah. it was delicious on valentine's I slept good. <laughs> Take the shot. Take the shot, hey. <laughs> Take the shot. So yeah, man. So Valentine's. And then you have a Valentine's one? No. He he came over. Uh, oh, well, that's well, what C4, he was trying to sit you. Yeah, C four. Trying to get C4 you the, C4 you the family. His, his bro. Valentine's. Bro, I had a trifecta just right now. I just took all three. All three what? Uh, the, I did the focus one. I did the. You drank three C fours. Triple dip. Yeah. You just drank three C4s. I quadruple dip because I took the psychotic. <laughs> Wait, all three I took the psychotic some... earlier this morning when I worked out. So I'm on it right now, dude. I'm just like, bro, that's a lot I'm of stuff. I'm zeroed bro. in right now. I'm on it. He said he's thousand. on a thousand milligrams. Hey, man, if you ever need security on the road, Juan will run through a wall. <laughs> <laughs> if you tell him there's C4 on the other side of that wall. You need to drive across country? I'm, I'm there. I'm fucking, I'll be the driver. What's up? Hey, if you got a show in Phoenix tomorrow, <laughs> he'll be like, let's leave right now. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. See? You can make it actually. Fifteen hours. <laughs> I've, do, I've done that. He's done that. So show wise, man, what you got planned for this year? How you gonna attack? Like what markets or how you? You know what I'm saying? What, what's all on the horizon? 
Um, I got a couple shows coming up. I got Dallas coming up. I got a, a tour in New Mexico coming up. Um, you know, just little shows. I got some stuff in Kansas I'm doing. So it's not really like before this COVID, you know, stuff mm-hmm. changed everything. Like my schedule, mm-hmm. like January, I'd be like, okay, from I'll be here in January, February, March, like my whole mm-hmm. schedule. Now it's just like, you know, because I feel like so many of these uh, promoters and clubs and stuff that I was dealing with in the past, a lot of them fell off. Like mm. the clubs closed down and, mm-hmm. you know, now they doing the other stuff. They got regular jobs now or whatever. So yeah. um, and then now a lot of the times I'm just doing it myself. Like I just go rent out a venue myself or I just go uh, do a pop up at a homie store, you know, clothing store, or music store, or whatever, and just pop up and do my own thing. So how did Shit. that affect how, how did the pandemic affect the rap game? Because like I know for for comedy. It like changed in a way where it was like all of a sudden like guys you never heard of started popping off because of social media because right, that's where right, they got big right. and so now they're touring all over now yeah. and so did that happen? I mean I think it was similar because uh, <clears throat> during during that you know when everybody everything kind of died down as far as public you know performances or appearances whatever um, that's when people went hard on the internet they were sitting at home they didn't have nothing to do mm-hmm. but. You know, if you have a camera and, and a microphone and, you know, a, a tripod with a light on it, I mean, the world is here. So I think people took advantage of, uh, of that during COVID and created a whole bunch of new, you know, like the TikTok era kind of, you know, really blew up then because everybody was sitting at home. But even like I, I would say like music sales for me kind of went up because people were sitting at home. Now they're listening to music. Now they're on YouTube watching the videos. Now they're, you know, stuff like that. So it was kind of like. You know, I kind of took a loss here, but, you know, kind of came back over here. So, you know, kind of balanced out. And I've never been one to just, oh, no, COVID. Oh, what do I do now? Like, no, nah, I'm going to find a way. I recorded a whole album during COVID. You know what I mean? Oh, so, mm. yeah, like I, I I, just kept it moving. So, just. And, and uh, make sure y'all check out That Boy T on YouTube because all the videos, man, like psh, big numbers on all of them. What was your YouTube channel called? It's that boy T. Everything. It's, it's that boy T across everything. So I T Z. Yeah, I T Z. That boy T. It's that boy T. So yep. shiggity. Uh-huh. We fuck around. Have to do like a uh, <clears throat> a music and comedy event. There you go. They that go together, dope, man. Yeah, they, they do really go together. Do. They could, especially with like the right venue. Mm-hmm. Where, um, like, how how would you see that? Like a standing room. Yeah, I mean the comedy's got to go first mm-hmm. for for sure. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, it, it's hard to follow. Yeah, music. we can't have everyone hype and then be like, okay, hey, hey, hey now, now shut funny up, thing, <laughs> and we're gonna talk. Follow that, <laughs> yeah. okay? You know, it's just that. So, so I think definitely like like a like a show followed by like a concert probably probably works. Jim Brewer the, style, the best. Uh, we did uh, when I was on Latin Comedy Jam. We did a couple shows with, with the with DJ Kane, and that, that's how we did it. Like he, it was a show, and then he did like a little three song concert at the at the end. You know what markets was that? We did a uh, Wild Horse Pass Casino in Phoenix. Oh, really nice, really nice uh, theater out there at that casino. Okay, yeah. But what does Jim Brewer do? Jim Brewer was doing that for Metallica. And and he was their guy, but he like, was opening up for Metallica. he was opening up for him, getting into it, and then sometimes he would even go on stage and start singing some of the songs with them. Like it was like it got real yeah. hype, and that would actually work to your favor because if you did both, it'd be it'd be dope because then you could do your hour and you could sit out for a while, and then if you decide, oh, you know what, let me do a couple songs, I feel it today, mm-hmm. you just jump on that. Would, that would work to your advantage actually. We were gonna have the uh, sh- 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 guys mm-hmm. uh, perform after me. Uh, in Corpus, but one of the dudes mm-hmm. went out to LA and shit and started oh. kicking it with Jenny Six Nine and all this other crazy mm-hmm. shit. But we shall see, man. Might be interesting to mix. We look mm-hmm. into it. Look you got some shows coming yeah. up? Huh? Uh, yeah, Campus. yeah, man. Uh, so I'm gonna be on the uh, Keenan Thompson uh, is sponsoring a, uh, a nationwide comedy contest. And so I was one of the chosen performers for that. So I'm gonna go out there and drop a hot three minute set. I yeah. haven't done a mm-hmm. I haven't done a three minute set. The in, hot three. And I don't know how long. So so we're gonna see how how I do. But it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, really good Texas comics on it. So it, it, it <coughs> should be fun. That's gonna be on the 22nd in San Antonio at Upstage Comedy Lounge, where I will be actually headlining. So come see me do three minutes, and then come see me do an yeah. hour plus on Cinco de Mayo. At Upstage Comedy Lounge that, that, in San Antonio. That, that's what George Lopez should do. He should be like, I know I haven't been the most instrumental to a lot of up and coming <laughs> talent, but moving forward, you like be saying? like um, uh, Simon Cowell and do like a Star Search. Well, y'all, you probably you're too young yeah. to remember Star Search, but uh, <laughs> hey, a talent search. 
<laughs> he, he don't be knowing shit. And, and yeah. he don't have a mic either, so he can't defend himself. Right, right. <laughs> oh, you don't even have a mic? No. Man, we got to get on that. Go, go fuck me, Rob, guy. He needs a mic and a camera. God damn. Yeah. Fund us. But, but go fund Rob. George should do that. He should be like, I know I haven't been the most helpful, but I'm, you know, I'm going out city to city. You know, like Kevin Hart had Heart of the City. Come do your hot yeah. three minutes. I mean, I mean, why not? From from a producer. That's how you spin it. Like, lean into it. Like, okay, y'all saying I'm selfish. Mm-hmm. Watch what I'm about to do. Let me fucking Put take that energy. On. I'm going to give him a walk-on roll on, on whatever. Yeah. Hey, you be like, whatever the price. This one, for this contest, it's not even a... I mean, like, you get to go to... New, they fly you out to... If you win your region or whatever, they fly you out to New York to... I think you do a showcase, some, a showcase show somewhere at some club in New York. That's cool. And then you get to go watch a taping of SNL. It's not really, it's not, the prize ain't anything that's going to put you on, but it's, it, it's that it, credit. It's cool. Like some, hey, look at this cool little thing that I did. And, you know, plus from, from a producing standpoint, I mean, they get to, they get to produce something like 20 something shows uh, at comedy clubs where all these, you know, amateur comics are going to bring their buddies and make them buy tickets to come Shit. support them. Uh, it's not a bad way to, if you're, you know. On the cool, it should be like, we could do a music one. Mm-hmm. Like, me, T, and someone else join yeah, forces. The talent search. You know what I'm saying? And, and like up and coming talent. And like, hey, bro, like you could turn it into content, number saying. one. So you could like film it, have like a YouTube channel for it. And like, okay. but like with a lot of, like, for example, there's a clip that Bo Bundy did where they asked him, like, hey, what's it like working with Chingo? How'd you meet Chingo? He told, he remembered every fucking detail, which was amazing. He was like, then he told me this and then he said that. And one of the things he said that I told him was like, Hey man, uh, when you up there on stage, bro, like easy on the cussing. I was really mm-hmm. telling him that because it was like a family type of event. Oh. It was the Chingo de Mayo, <laughs> and um, but but um, basically like on some feedback shit because I saw him perform. I was like, hey man, like I could tell you're doing your thing, but just sometimes be mindful in case you in a situation where all the cussing ain't gonna serve you type mm-hmm. of thing. But anyway, he he like remembered everything, right? And, um, but like, just from my experience and stuff, sometimes with, with artists, like, like you ever be in that situation T where like you see somebody either perform or you hear their verse or a song or something. And you just be thinking like, man, man, these motherfuckers are good. They popping. But man, if you'd have just, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just give them like some constructive criticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of people can take it, but a lot of people can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and really, at the end of the day, you're just trying to help them out. Cause you know, I mean, to me, like I could say, just sit here and all day and say my raps are the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? But I, at the end of the day, I know they're not, and I know that sometimes I like sitting in the studio and have other creative people around me because if I'm spitting some or you know whatever recording. I want your input, or yeah. I want their input, or I want the engineer to... A feedback. Nah, say that this, instead of doing it this way, do it this try way. Try like this, one more time. And once I opened myself to that, because first I was like, bro, you tripping, my shit hard. You yeah. Yeah, I ain't changing nothing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? We gonna run it the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Mm-hmm. 